These ideas are destroying the tarantula hobby, so let's just get right into it. Welcome to Tarantula Collective, my name is Richard, and just to be clear, I am not calling anyone out in this video, and I'm not blaming anyone in particular. In fact, I'm gonna keep it on myself. These are five ideas or beliefs or concepts that I had, and over time, gaining some experience and some knowledge, and with just a little bit of self-reflection, I identified these things as problematic. They're not just detrimental to tarantulas, but to the hobby in general. My hopes are making this video that some of you all might relate or agree, or maybe it's something you've never taken any time to think about, and this video might open open your mind a little bit and make you do a little self-reflecting and then we can see if the things we say we believe and the things that are important actually line up with our actions. The first one being that as tarantula keepers, we just gotta have the most recently discovered species in the hobby. We saw this with the Chilabrachi species Electric Blue, the T. Celadonia, the Birupis Sigmagorum. Anytime a new species is discovered in the wild, it seems everyone in the hobby, including myself, really wants to get that species in the hobby and keep it in captivity, regardless of what any of the laws in the US or in other countries might be. The truth is that tarantula welfare in the wild should be our number one priority. Because loving something doesn't mean that you have to possess it. So just because we love a newly discovered species, it doesn't mean we need to keep it in our house. These are living animals that are integral to their ecosystems. They're not just Pokemon for us to collect. So as a hobby, we should be championing conservation efforts and not contributing to their extinction in the wild. In fact, we should almost be embarrassed when a newly discovered species immediately makes its way into the hobby. And one way that we can curb this is by not buying wild-caught tarantulas, especially newly discovered species. It's all about supply and demand. So if we cut off the demand for these new species, then people won't be going out into the wild and poaching them just to supply our demand. So if we don't buy them, they'll stop illegally removing them from the wild. I made a whole video that discusses the legality issues surrounding the T. Celadonia that I'll link right here. But even that's out of date as things are constantly changing and, and the hobby's evolving and growing. And now they're a pretty common species that everybody seems to have and is breeding and selling. The second idea that's really holding us back as a hobby is that tarantulas have no capacity for thought or preference or have the ability to learn or adapt or even remember. Since I've gotten the hobby, I've always been taught, I've always heard that tarantulas are 100% instinctual. They only react, they do not respond. They have no ability to remember, to learn, to figure things out. They can really only adapt over long periods of time that takes generations. Essentially that they only react to stimuli in the moment and that reaction will only be for their self preservation. But as more research is being done and released to the public, we're learning that tarantulas have a little bit more intelligence than we gave them credit for. And this research is really beginning to show what a lot of us as keepers have already observed. Tarantulas seem to get habituated to our feeding patterns. There's some kind of cue in the physical world that these tarantulas have learned means they're about to get fed or they're about to get watered. I did a whole podcast about this. It's like over an hour long. We really did a deep dive into a lot of this research and what it means. And I will link that right here if you want to watch that later. But long story short, essentially what it came down to is that tarantulas definitely have a lot more capacity for thought and for preference and the ability to learn and adapt to situations than we ever really thought that they had. And in learning that and accepting that as a fact, potentially can have wide impacts on their husbandry and, and their care and, and a lot of other things. Which is why I think many people are kind of resistant to that idea because if you accept the fact that they are more intelligent than we thought, they're more aware of their environment and interacting with it and that they, they need it enrichment, then we have to change our care and our husbandry and that just makes a lot of people uncomfortable because people don't like change. And again, I'm keeping this on me. This is something that I thought and I believed for many, many years and just recently I've started to shift in my opinion and, and in my beliefs. And I'm realizing that the more I learn about tarantula's cognitive abilities, the more important I think it is that they have enrichment and that they have better and larger enclosures than what we have essentially said we're good enough. Number three is that tarantulas make an amazing pet for everyone. Again, I am 100% guilty of this. I I think I even made a video talking about why tarantulas were such great pets and said that they're pretty much for everyone. They're the perfect pet. But the reality is that's that's not true. Tarantulas have venom. A lot of them have urticating hairs and they're not really a pet that you can handle or pet or play with. Tarantulas are incapable of reciprocating love. Like you can love your tarantula all you want, but it's never gonna show that love back to you. I mean, they're worse than cats. And there are a lot of people out there that are arachnophobic. So even if I really want a tarantula, I also have to be cognizant of the people that live in my home. If I live 
lived with my parents. I, I would have to take their opinions into consideration. And they may just say flat out, no, you can't have a spider while you're living in my house. In fact, that's exactly what my parents said when I was a kid. No spiders, no snakes. But even if you're older like me and you've got a wife or a girlfriend or a roommate or, you know, whatever the situation is, you gotta take into consideration other people's feelings that live within that home. If they're terrified of spiders, maybe you have to take it easy. You gotta kind of get them adjusted to the idea, show them videos, help them learn more about the spiders, and then they'll be comfortable with it. But that's a video for another time. I mean, there are so many reasons that tarantulas make a great pet, and you can watch this video right here if you want to learn more about that. But the reality is that to some people, the venom, the urticating hairs are just a turnoff, or the fact that they're just an eight-legged animal. They're a, a spider, and this person's arachnophobic. That will not be a perfect pet for them. So we got to stop acting like it's a cure-all, across-the-board, 100% perfect pet for everybody. And again, no one's probably more guilty of that than me. The fourth idea is that tarantulas are inexpensive pets. Now, this one is like kind of half true and half not true. When you look at a price of a tarantula compared to that of a ball python or some of these geckos out there, at most tarantulas may cost a couple of hundred dollars, where some of these reptiles are like four or five digits. So in comparison, they're definitely cheaper. Even when you consider a dog that you would get for free or like adopt for $50 at the shelter. Over time, with all the vet visits, the shots, the food, all of that, it's gonna be more expensive than a tarantula. The issue is that sometimes we kind of make tarantulas out to be that they only cost 20 bucks and then you can get everything you need for their husbandry for five bucks. So all in $25, you got a pet for 10 or 20 years. But something that I'm beginning to believe is really important is that we should be willing to spend as much on the husbandry of a spider as we are on the spider itself. So if we're gonna drop a hundred or $200 on a tarantula, at the bare minimum, we should be spending that much on their husbandry. Spiders might be cheaper than a lot of other exotic pets, but that should not mean that we only recommend bare bone husbandry. I really feel like the days of Sterilite boxes and toilet paper tube hides are gonna be a thing of the past. Personally, I believe we should be giving them a little bit nicer enclosures, a little bit larger enclosures, and providing a lot more enrichment in those enclosures. I work with tarantula cribs and a few other businesses that make these really nice enclosures, and they're amazing and they're great. And I've got discount codes down below in the description if you ever wanna upgrade your enclosure. But I am not suggesting that everyone must buy the top of the line, nicest, most expensive enclosures for every spider in your collection. Because giving optimal spider care does not mean buying all brand new stuff. A lot of enclosures you can get really cheap if you go to like Goodwill, check out Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. I mean, there's a lot of places you can buy used enclosures that people got, they used for a few weeks or a few months and then now they don't need anymore. They're just trying to clear it out of their garage. And even beyond that, there are a lot of people out there that don't buy the cork bark and the, the fancy sterilized leaves and, and all the supplies that I get from somewhere like BioDude. They just go out into the wild, deep in the woods. They find these things in nature. They bring them back. They sanitize them or sterilize them. There are a lot of videos out there that will show you how to do that. And they're essentially able to get a lot of really good enriching decorations for their tarantulas enclosures at essentially no cost. So we can give them the optimal care and provide plenty of enrichment and barely have to spend any extra money at all. Number five, and this is probably the biggest one and maybe the most controversial, but the previous four ideas all kind of feed into this one. And that is that tarantula care is simple, easy, and never needs to evolve. The more we learn about tarantulas, the more evident it is that they can really benefit from enrichment in their enclosures, providing them with plenty of things to climb on and web up or plenty of substrate to burrow and, and plenty of space to make those intricate burrows. I mean, basic husbandry is, is okay. It's worked for many years, but as we know better, we should do better. I had an interesting podcast with Ryan from Marshall Arachnids and he's got a background in biology and, and zookeeping and he has some pretty progressive ideas on temperature gradients in tarantula enclosures and some other cool ideas. I will link that podcast right here if you want to learn more about that. But even the people that get really upset, like the old school tarantula breeders that don't like the things that he says about providing temperature gradients in tarantula enclosures, they may be clutching their pearls at that concept, but they have no problems recommending differences in temperatures when you're breeding a tarantula. Like sometimes you got to get the temperature and humidity up to a specific point just to get them to drop an egg sac. Or you need to have a consistent warmer temperature or cooler temperature or for the eggs to grow and hatch properly. So temperature gradients and, and changing the humidity and temp of enclosures is not a new idea. It's definitely something that a lot of breeders use. But all he's really suggesting in that podcast is that we take those same kind of ideas and treatment that we do when we're breeding tarantulas and move it to their general care. But if you don't want to listen to that entire podcast, I did upload a video a few months ago that discusses the changes that I've decided to make when it comes to building enclosures for all my tarantulas. And I will link that right there. If there are any archaic ideas out there that you think should be discussed or addressed and possibly evolved, be sure to tell me about it down below in the comments. And if you disagreed with anything that I said or you just want to add to it, do that down below in the comments as well. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. 
Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>